Okay, mate, I'm going to start looking at your um, life growing up in Chicago and what it was like for you, obviously, prestigious in, in basketball terms. And in a broad sense, what was it like growing up in a city like that where basketball is so big and so popular? Um, it just means a lot just to be from the city. Um, obviously, we got a lot of pros that's playing everywhere in the NBA, overseas, and the talent there at the young generation is actually growing, growing every year. So, I mean, it just feels good just to be from a city that's strong in the basketball wise. So. And was basketball always the career option for you or was there other stuff growing up that you were interested in or had maybe aspirations to, to go on and do? I mean, I was a kid, so I wanted to have fun and stuff like that, but I didn't start taking basketball seriously until like the eight years old, something like that. And then I just started to work at my game and stuff like that. And high school at Foreman for you, what, how do you reflect on that time? Obviously, that's probably the age you start to realise that basketball could be a potential option for you. So, looking back at that time, how important was that for you in your career? Um, it's like the start um, for me, to be honest, because like I said, I started late. Uh, when I got to high school, I had coaches that, that told me I had a lot of potential to be um, a good player and stuff like that. And that's when I really tried to work at it um, and stuff like that. And um, we played like some of the top teams in the city that had prepared us and me individually for that so and that's when college coaches and stuff started to come around and get attention and stuff like that so. And then moving on to your collegiate career with uh, the St. Louis Billikens obviously was that um, the school you always going to plan to go to was that the school you always wanted to go to or was there other options when you were obviously choosing where you were going to end up? I had a dream school but um, obviously um, it, sometimes it don't work like that but St. Louis is definitely one of the schools that was on me really tough so that's the school I really went with. Um, they was always around, um, calling, checking up on me, coming to my games and stuff like that. So I kinda, that's kind of what made me make my decision. And during your college career and professional career, there's obviously a lot of points and stats we're going to get onto. But I want to touch on your so sophomore year um, with the Billikens. You only started 13 of 33 games, um, significantly more uh, less than in previous uh, years for you. Was that a difficult thing to accept or did you kind of accept that role for that specific year? I had to um, to accept it. It was a different um, coaching staff, uh, players we had at the time and we was trying to do something different and I'm the kind of player that uh, whatever makes the team works, I roll with that. So um, I had to fulfill that new role and stuff like that, which was like a basically a defensive role and obviously scoring if I had the opportunity to. And um, But yeah, I definitely had to transition to that. And your massively successful college career obviously got you uh, the chance to go and play with the Iowa Wolves in the 2014-15 campaign. Obviously, a, a massive team, a worldwide known one. How good an experience for you was that? Um, it was a lot of ex-NBA players on that team, so I was kind of like the rookie um, on the team, so I was learning a lot. And obviously, when I got my opportunity, I can showcase what I can do, but it was kind of like a learning experience for me. Um, to play on that stage, it was just big for me because it's my first year out. Get to get my foot in the door, get to um, see how it's like in the pro level and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I kind of say it was just a learning experience for me. And from there, you moved to Ecuador. And my pronunciation might not be correct, but I'm, I believe it's uh, Deportivo Cuadevo. We'll, we'll go with that. Averaging 32 points a game. Was that for you the best form of your career that you've been in? Yeah, because I kind of, I, it was that time I had to have the ball in my hands. I was playing a lot and I was just trying to prove myself from uh, from the previous season uh, in the G League. So I uh, kind of just wanted to make a name for myself and try to get noticed and get some more doors open after that season. So I kind of just laid it all on the floor, just trying to go from there. And from that red-out form, you, you moved back home to Chicago for two seasons playing with your hometown clubs, uh, steam shooting an impressive 40% from three. Again, a season where you're in incredible form, but kind of more around the question of returning home. Why was that decision made for you? Was it right for you at the time, or was it something that kind of a spur of the moment that just happened as it was? It was something I had to um, just at the moment because uh, at the time it was kind of late for me to get um, back overseas where I wanted to go. So I had to um, just settle for that. I don't want to say settle, but that's something I had to go just to stay in shape and uh, get the game film and stuff like that and just stay. Uh, game ready just in case coaches call or my agent call, but I just kind of just had to make that decision. And your first stint in the BBL obviously came with Manchester Giants. And just to read out some of your statistics here 33 appearances, all starts, averaging 15.7 uh, points a game, 5.3 assists, 3.2 rebounds, 38.8% from the 
from three again, incredibly impressive. And then you have this career high 50 point game that obviously gets yeah. talked about a lot. It's safe to say that your time in the BBL with Manchester was an impressive one. And how good, looking back at that time with the Giants, was that for you? It was amazing. Um, the city itself, Manchester is a good city. Um, the people was great. And just the players on the team, the organization as a whole, um, I enjoyed my time there. We had a good year. Obviously, it was like a game out of the playoffs or something like that. But like individually, I had a lot of good performances. And my job and my role was to lead the team the best way I can. And I had like players like Willie Clayton, who made a name for himself in this league, uh, Tory Butler, uh, Vlako Granich, who was the imports with me. And then we had Colin Jones, who's, who's known in this league, and, um, and the other um, James Jones. So um, I enjoyed my time there. Um, definitely was a good team. Um, when I see Danny, we played him a couple of times this year, and I used to see Danny, we always reminisce and stuff. So it was cool. And then you do go back abroad to Luxembourg this time with, with AB, a, an unbelievable 41.2% from three, it seems. We're always pulling out these statistics. Yeah, yeah. Incredible, incredible numbers from three-point range. And just ignoring the Phoenix for a second, Obviously, that is a time of your career, again, where you're in red-hot form, shooting incredibly well. Again, let's ignore the Phoenix. Were you sad that that season was postponed and put on hold? Yeah, that was something I was looking forward to. I never played in Luxembourg before. And um, so usually when you, it's your fresh start in a new country, new team, you want to make a name for yourself and get a feel for that team and stuff like that. I just hate that it was postponed because um, we was heading in the right direction, had some good players, good coach. Um, but things happen for a reason, we just got to move on from that. So, And as you said, perfectly, things do happen for a reason and you have to move on and adapt and luckily for us that adaptation saw you come to the Phoenix yeah. back in the BBL after your time in Manchester. How did that move come about? Were you excited for it and what did you expect from the Phoenix coming into it? It happened fast um, because after I um, found out that the league was being postponed, my agent uh, contacted me and said the Phoenix need a player. Would I be able to, uh, would I be likely to go to the BBL? And I was like, yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, I played there before, got some experience, uh, kind of familiar with the league, um, so why not? And um, when they made the announcement that I was coming here, I was excited for sure just to be back in the league. And, and I'm playing, because it's a lot of leagues that was got canceled, and just to be playing a game that you love, it's always a blessing. So I was happy to be back. And obviously, we haven't had the Phoenix fans in, as, in attendance as much as we would liked. And the season has been kind of mixed emotions so far. We had the tough period at the start with COVID and a number of players out, and obviously that's the time when you stepped up. Yeah. Um, in broad terms, where can the Phoenix go this season? And what would you say the aims for, the aims for the club now are, looking, sitting down and looking back at it so far? I mean, we all have the same goal, and that's to obviously make the playoffs and to win the championship. Um, everybody's on the same page to do so. Since I've came here from the start to now, everybody gotten better as a player. And I think everybody just buying on to the same thing and that's winning the uh, championship. And we all compete and work hard and we know what we gotta do to win. We just gotta keep getting better as a team and preparing for these teams and make a run. And can we win it? I think we can. We have potential to do so. Um, obviously adding uh, the experience, Matthew, um, uh, Brian Manning, and uh, he's very known in this league or playing overseas. so. Uh, with his uh, veteran leadership, I think he can help us a lot.